Hello and welcome to the first uh, regular video I'm filming for this channel in this new location. Uh, hopefully it's not too echoey or anything. Feel free to let me know if it is. I'm also very sick today, so if I sound weird or anything, that, that also might be part of it. But, uh, you know, today I'm here to talk about Arclight, which I have here. And, um, it's not very good. This is the introduction song. It's not very good, but it's not too long. You know, I, I can't say that nothing happened in the story. I can say that absolutely nothing interesting happened in the story, at least in the first book. And I, I have read the second one that's a little bit better, uh, but there's also a third book, which I will not read. You know, like, there is nothing worth experiencing here. Like, even though there's a few bits scattered throughout the books, which are kind of enjoyable, the rest of it is just so nothing that there, there's not even much to complain about, really. Like, I can't even point to it and say, yeah, that character moment was kind of stupid, or that makes this person look like an asshole, or this bit of the world building doesn't make much sense. Like, there, there's just nothing there. And I think a lot of other people agree with me. Like, other people who read at least the first book just decided not to go past that, because on Goodreads, the first book has 4,200 ratings, which is not bad, actually. That's a moderately successful uh, a number. I <laughs> think that's, that's a moderately successful number of readers who have came out and read your book. And even if it's not super highly reviewed, people were intrigued enough to pick it up. Uh, but the second book has 742 ratings. And the third book has 11. Not 1,100. 11 people read the third book and rated it on Goodreads. My god. That is an insane drop. Like, even with uh, the setup for this book being as good as it is, because I, I do genuinely think the setup here is really enjoyable, uh, there's just nothing to make it worth slogging through, because so much of it is, like I said, it's just nothing. It's not that nothing happens here, it's that nothing interesting happens. So the story here is about this place called the Arclight. Now, sometime before the story began, like a long time before the story began, uh, these creatures called Fades appeared, and Fades are basically like ghosts, at least they seem that way at first, because uh, when you look at them, they have like pale, dead skin, they look almost like humans, uh, but they're wearing like rags, so you can't really see them very well, and their eyes glow, and they also, bright light hurts them, so they only come out at night, so they're, they're kind of like ghosts, or specters, or poltergeists, whatever you want to say like that. And they appeared, and they just destroyed the world. Like they, but like I said, they are hurt by bright lights, so some people manage to create this place called the arc light where there's just constant bright lights all over the place all around the perimeter all inside uh the inner walls of the settlements everything so no fades can get in and they've managed to survive for generations like i think six or seven generations by the time the book begins so it's it's been a long time since the apocalypse and the last humans live there or at least as far as anyone knows they're the last of humanity and enter the main character, who is a girl named Marina, and she is actually not from the Arclight. Like, they they went on patrol because they heard a weird noise, and they found her outside. And she has amnesia. She doesn't know uh, who she is, she doesn't know her real name. Like, they, they name her Marina because they found her on a dock. And I hope the heater isn't destroying my sound, I apologize if it is, but they found her on a dock by a lake. and. Uh, so that's where the name Marina comes from, but she has no memories, and a lot of people are wondering, well, who is this girl, where'd she come from, what does this mean for us? And then the story begins, and I think that is a pretty good setup. Like, we have the, this main character who instantly has motivation to try and figure out what's going on, uh, all these people around her who want to help her on her journey, and also think that she can help them on their journey, and we have this unique apocalypse. Like, I've actually wanted to see something a little bit more supernatural in the apocalypse genre for a while, because that doesn't happen very often. So what went wrong? It took me a long time to figure out. and think, In fact, I think I was partway through the second book before I realized what exactly was wrong with both the first and second books. And, like I said, nothing interesting happens here. It's not that nothing happens, because sometimes books are really bad because just it there's no plot, so there, there's nothing that happens. Like, this is particularly noticeable in romance novels or novels where romance is meant to be a subplot, but the subplot kind of overtakes the main story, and so it's just kind of characters 
I don't know, yelling at each other and getting into petty arguments and then saying, I'm never going to talk to them again and then brooding for a little while and then coming back and saying, okay, I love you. Like, it, you know what I'm talking about. There are a lot of books like that that are bad because just nothing happens. But in Arclight, there are events, you know, th things do happen, like characters go out and do stuff. It's just that none of these events like tie together and they don't really seem to be leading towards anything. And I realized after a while that that's because there is no conflict in this book. Like none at all. Based on the setup, there's a lot of different things that the story could have been about. You know, like a character has to want something and they have to go and try and get it, but there have to be obstacles in their way. Whether those obstacles be other people or some force of nature or just like their inner turmoil that they're trying to get past. Like, that's what a story is. Like, that's what conflict is and that's what makes stories work. The characters trying to struggle against whatever is stopping them from reaching their goal. And based on the setup, you might think that the story is about Marina going out and trying to discover her memories and find out who she is, but that's not really the point of the story. Like, she does find it out, but that seems more incidental. Uh, it's not about uh, finding a safe place, you know? Like, you might think, okay, the arc light is dying somehow and there's something going wrong so soon it won't be a safe haven for the fades so they need from the fades so they need to go and find a different place to to stay which is you know kind of a cliche in the post apocalypse genre but no that would be fine but no that's not what happens here it's not about them going out and trying to end the threat of the fades once and for all and it's not even really about the romance, because there is a romance between Marina and a boy named Tobin, and a little bit of a love triangle with another character, but uh, it's made pretty clear early on that Marina's not really into that other guy, so it's really just Marina and Tobin. And sure, there is some time devoted to their romance, but like again, there's not anything really standing in their way, so there's not a conflict there. It's just the two of them get to know each other better, they fall in love. Great. And so because of this lack of conflict, which is like, again, it's so basic and so foundational that I didn't even really think to look for it, and I was wondering, like, what, the, what was wrong with the story, and I was thinking, like, higher level stuff, and then I realized, no, it's just this very, very basic issue. Uh, so there are events that happen, you know, characters do discover things, and they do go out and occasionally find themselves in danger and stuff, but none of these events are leading anywhere because there's not really any goal, because there's not really any conflict whatsoever. Like, for example, uh, the first book starts with a Fade incursion into the Arclight. Like, the, a couple of Fades attack, and they get all the kids in school, including Marina, and just tell her, hey, get to the safe area while we try and fight these things off, and we get our first glimpse at a Fade, and admittedly, they do seem, like, mysterious and powerful and kind of scary, and so I think this opening bit is good uh, when viewed in a vacuum, but other than showing the danger of the fades, it leads nowhere. You know, like, y you think, okay, why are the fades attacking now when they haven't before? And they, they uh, do give an answer for that later, but the thing is, later on, a single fade comes through and gets captured, and it is looking for Marina. So you realize, okay, like at the beginning, they were looking for her for whatever reason, but like those two things are just redundant, you know? Like that attack at the beginning was just meant to be an exciting opening and it didn't need to be there. It didn't lead anywhere. Now, about halfway through book two, a new villain appears and this new villain does create, huzzah, an actual conflict. And so because of that, the second half of book two is all right. You know, I, I kind of liked this sequence, and for whatever reason on Goodreads, uh, Arclight is only shown to have two books in the series, so I thought the second one was just the end of it. But if you actually go to the author's uh, page and look at the book she's written, you can see one called Horizon, which is very clearly labeled the third book in the Arclight series, and the second one ends on a cliffhanger as well. But anyways, like that's part of why I liked the sequence, because I thought, okay, things are wrapping up and coming to an end, and even if I wasn't super into this story, it did at least end in a satisfying way. Like, there is a thrilling climax against a threatening foe, heroes have to use their wits, and they barely scrape their way out of danger. Like, okay, yeah, it, it's not a bad sequence. Uh, but then I realized that there's a whole other book, and I, I just gave up. You know, because even if I enjoyed that bit, it just was not worth going through all the crap I had to go through before. 
And so even if the third book ends in an amazing way, or even if the third book itself is amazing, it just wasn't worth going through all this other nothingness. Because that's what it is. It, it, there's nothing going on here that I care about. There are some other issues, though. I don't mean to make it sound like this book is perfect, except for this very basic foundational thing, which prevents the rest of it from being enjoyed. Like, no, it's actually... There are other issues here. Like, for example, the Fades at first seem like supernatural entities, but they're actually science fiction ones. Like, the, the apocalypse was caused by science fiction. And that was actually revealed pretty early in the book, so it's not a spoiler. I think, like, what, 40, maybe 50 pages in, they just... And it's not a plot twist either. The characters already know this. It's just, like, exposition for the audience. Like, basically, the Fade are actually created by nanites. Like, you know, small, tiny little machines, nanomachines, whatever you want to call them, uh, that were created in order to, like, go inside the human body and fight cancer cells and stuff. Like, somehow they just got out of control and they turned humans into Fades. But the nanites are also susceptible to bright light. And so that's... I don't know why they're susceptible to bright light, but... Like, that's what caused the apocalypse. And honestly, I was not a fan of that. Like I, like I was saying, I wish they were supernatural because we don't see that a whole lot, and it, I just think it would have been... I, I just think it would have been a better story. Like, not just more original, but just better, more fun, cooler, whatever you want to say. I just... I, I don't know. It, it would make more sense that light would hurt them as well if it was supernatural, because I'm not sure why nanomachines would be damaged by bright light, but whatever. So, yeah, this is not a good series. It's not actively terrible, you know, I'll, I'll give it that much. It's not the worst thing I've ever read. Like, the characters are all fine, you know, none of them are annoying or anything. They all do have at least a little bit of personality. They all do have a little bit of complexity to them and, like, you know, multiple facets to them. Uh, they, it, <laughs> there's not a lot to say, but, you know, they're, they're fine. Uh, the prose, for the most part, like, the way the book is written, it's just kind of average, but once in a while there's a good line in there. You know, there's a couple of them. They're not a lot, but there's a couple. I, I kind of liked them. They gave, like, some vivid imagery and gave me a really good sense of how the characters were feeling in that moment and stuff. I, I liked it. And, as I said, the climax of book two is genuinely really good. Like, it's them fighting against, uh, these... Creature, I want to give it away, because if someone actually still cares, then they can go read it. Uh, but they're fighting against these creatures, which are not the fades they know, and they're genuinely really powerful and really threatening and ki kind of scary. Like It reminded me of the fades at the very beginning of the first book before they kind of made them lame as time went on. And so, I, I again, I genuinely enjoyed the climax of book two. It's just not worth going through all of the nothingness to get there. It's It's just not. So... At the end, while, while I wouldn't say this book series is horrendous, it's kind of written for no one. You know, like, there's just very little here for anyone to enjoy. Like, if you're looking for a specific niche, like, post-apocalypse, like, there's much better ones for you, and this one is not a very good example of it. Uh, if you're looking for romance, there's... It's not focused on that much, and it's not particularly good when it is focused on. If you're looking for supernatural stuff, it's not here. Like, in the, in the end, it's just not written for anyone, even though it sounds really cool from the start. So, I, uh, yeah, I, I don't know if I can recommend this to a single person, but, you know, I, I've read worse. So, that's all. Goodbye. Oh my goodness, people are still watching this? I'm, I'm not sure why I thought most people clicked away before the credits started, but... Uh, yeah, these are all my Patreon, Patreon people, uh, and my $10 and up patrons are Oppo Savalainen, Olivia Rayen, Brother Santotis, Buffy Valentine, Carolina Clay, Dan Antselievich, Dark King, Dawn, Dio, Echo, Flax, Carcat Kitsune, Lexi Delorme, Liza Rudakova, Lord Tiebreaker, Microphone, Mistboy, Peep the Toad, Roby Reviews, Ruby Ishmael, Sad Mardigan, Sillier the Vixen, Stone Stairs, Tesla Shark, They Victus, and Wesley. All of you are great, and if you want your name on here, then consider becoming a patron. You get early access to my videos as well. It's it, it's a great deal, I promise. And if you don't want to do that, you know, you could always subscribe to the channel, like this video, comment on it so it goes around, uh, or, you know, becoming a YouTube channel member. That That's cool, too. Uh, follow all my socials and stuff, which are linked below. Uh, I'll see you. Uh, goodbye.